Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. It's time to get the Camaro back out. Even though it's the end of the season, it's a little weird. Usually it's out way sooner than this, but it's kind of been neglected. I ended up building the old burnout truck here and just not a lot of events to take the Camaro to, but for me, I want to get this thing back out. I was traveling during the few events that did happen this year and I just feel like I want to get this thing back out. If you are new to the channel, haven't seen it or whatever, my Camaro is a 98 with an LS in it. It's actually a built motor, stock block, 408 uh, with a billet 88 on it. I can show you guys that right now. After learning quite a bit, not too thrilled with the way that I wired it and everything, but this was my first build. The car does run great, but I do want to get through and clean up all that. So that's some of my plans for the winter. But I do have a Billet S488 LS6 intake, trick flow heads, and it's an LQ4 block with manly crank rods and pistons in it uh non-intercooled the pipe just comes down and goes back up to the intake methanol injection to help cool the air intake temps so it actually comes in here uh runs on e98 part of the deal with this thing running on e98 is the injectors can get clogged the fuel filters can get clogged and get a lot of crap from the car sitting around gumming up from e so what i do before every year before i take it out i always do a fresh oil change pull the injectors and clean them. I have my own injector cleaning machine. I do that for some people here and there. Uh, since I melted a piston this one point in time, I just decided to get my own injector cleaning machine and clean them for other people. And I can always clean mine when I would feel like it. And then tuning, if there ever becomes an issue, easy enough, throw them in, verify, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these injectors. I run Bosch 160s in this car. Uh, pull out the fuel filter that's under the car over there. Do an oil change reinstall everything and get ready to go run it hopefully this weekend. So uh, let's get to it. Alrighty, so I might've messed up and that time lapse was super fast, but anyway, uh, I went ahead and just removed the four bolts, unhook all the wiring and lift up the fuel rails and you always drip fuel down through here like that. Uh, try to keep as much of it as I can out. So what I'm going to do now is I have all the injectors out. I let them out. Usually you'll number them just in case you had an issue with the cylinder. Some of these already have numbers scribed into them. You might be able to see that or not. Like that's number two. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take those inside, get those cleaned up, and then go ahead and pull the fuel filter in the back. Oil change. and It's pretty easy maintenance. It's uh, just to be sure that everything's good. Uh, like I said, I've melted a piston not having cleaned injectors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and that's something I want to do this winter is change up the injectors. These are like old school Bosch 160s and like minimum pulse width is like 1.6. AKA that means they don't idle very well. They, they take a minimum opening. So on E they even run rich. If I want to put this thing on pump gas, it'd be, it would really hate to idle. So if you don't have a lift and you ever get a chance to get a lift, well worth it. I've done this multiple times on the ground. This will be the first time doing it on the lift. Much easier right here. So I have two 450s up in the tank and then it comes down to this filter here uh, to a number eight line to the filter and then eight to the engine. And then it's a six return on this setup. Uh, it's done pretty well actually for the E and everything. So I mean, I'm noticing like the lines are starting to get a little stiffer and stuff over time since it's been on the car for a few years. Just a little summit filter, but you can unscrew it here, pull the filter out and clean it. So I'm gonna go ahead and un do the fittings here, pop this out, go ahead and clean it, and then put it back in. So that's out, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it here in the vise, remove this top, and then we can look and see how bad the filter's been after it pretty much sitting for, I mean, a few driving trips here and there, but more or less a year since I've had this out of the car, I think. I don't remember doing it the, this at the beginning of the year, so, um, yeah, let's check it out. All right, let's take a look. So it actually looks like there's some anti-seize on the filter, which is, what I did down there, because this thing is a pain to get loose. Uh, but you guys can kind of see a little bit of the gunk there. Usually you can see it right here on the base, but it's actually not looking, not looking too bad. Um, pretty, yeah, right there you can see a little, oh, can you guys see that hopefully? Right there in the center of the screen, that little piece right there. So that's, it's kind of like what you'll see when it's bad. It's like that little, oh, we pushed it down in there, I'll have to get it out, but. That little, it's like slime almost. Um, so you get a little bit of that on here. I'm gonna wipe up some of this anti-seize. And uh, I'm gonna just pop this little filter off. See if you guys can see that here. So, pretty much just can twist and pull, pop that off. Check all that, that looks all pretty good. I'm not seeing a bunch 
little gunk down in there. Mostly just anaxes. Um, so the filter actually doesn't, looks pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll just kind of clean the filter out, make sure nothing majors around there, which it looks really good. And then put it all back together. Uh, just snaps right there. You can get replacement filters, I believe. Uh, but this little setup's done done pretty decent for me. I think there's definitely some better like uh, micro glass or whatever you call it filters that you can get for these. Uh, like just the whole unit would be better, more suited for E. But this is what I bought when I first built the car, and it, it, it hasn't been too bad. Now that I got this off and the injector, it's gonna go ahead and clean everything, then reassemble it. Here's my injector cleaning machine. This flows it, and then there's some baths with ultrasonics that you can pulse it in and all that stuff. Uh, but so here's the setup. It can hold six injectors, so I got seven and eight still outside of it. Go ahead and check for leakage. So this pulses them just shut. Apply pressure. Make sure none of them are leaking. Set it to about that 42 range. And everything seems pretty good. Do a uniform test. Go ahead and check them out. I usually let it purge through, stop it drain out whatever's there because now I've gotten all the arrow lines and everything. They actually don't look too bad. The flow pattern is pretty consistent. Go ahead and let them run up here. They're actually going to look pretty good. Pull up the fluid. Blow out. Number three on this machine, for whatever reason, is always a little higher. I don't know if it's because it flows better to that injector, so because uh, it'll pulse the fuel pressure. So since the fuel pressure rises and lowers, number three is always a little weird. But as you guys can see, it is a little like this one to that one is even a little off. Which these are old injectors; they're not super super close, if I remember right. I mean, I think they're fairly decent, but that does show me that there's a little variance in them. And then gonna reflow them and see how they come out. Uh, but yeah, so that's where I can re-kick it off. If you watch when it builds pressure, it kind of bounces the pressure. It's only at 20 there anyway. But, so it's actually pretty consistent uh, on that one. So, I mean, probably this one being a little high doesn't concern me. That's kind of normal. Uh, so I'd say like this one, this one, and this one are all pretty close. So maybe this one and this one have a slight amount of crud in them and could use a little bit of cleaning. Uh, but yeah, that one, that one's not far off. So that, that's one thing that I've learned with this machine is number three is always a little goofy. I can kind of rotate this to that cylinder and this one will then be high and stuff like that. So, uh, which once I clean them to verify that, if I ever see that, I rotate them, verify that they all stay the same and everything as well. So I went ahead and swapped out the other two injectors. I'm gonna go ahead and flow those real quick. See where they line up. Just to make sure that at the beginning, nothing was way far off. But again, flow pattern looks pretty similar. Looking pretty decent. So that's after about 40 seconds of flowing. You guys can see where they're at. So yeah, all these look really close. That one being a little high is normal. So I mean, those would all be real good. Uh, so really, they all look really pretty decent. I, I probably didn't need to clean them. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw these in the bass and get them ultrasonic cleaned. So we get another 40 seconds of flow. Everything is looking real close, as you guys can see. This one's just a little less, but this one's a little more. So what I might do is just swap these two in the machine and see how they come out uh, since that one's... But I mean, they're all real close. Like these three are really close. I went ahead and ran them again, and I did switch the 1 and 7. They were this way, and you can still see that this one is still flowing more. So just one of those things is probably buying one of the cheaper machines. So now that they're all cleaned up, ready to go back in, I'm going to get the car lowered back down and get these things put in here. Injectors are back in it. I'll go ahead and prime it tomorrow, make sure there's no leaks. 
as well as I'm going to go ahead and do the oil change. So we will see you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, so next day, gonna try to finish up everything on the car as needed. Got some more VR1. Uh, it was actually low, I didn't have enough. And then went and picked up a new barrel of E, which I wasn't planning on since over the winter. I think I'm gonna take the car off of E, but Bernie does run on E, so uh, way cheaper to buy that thing by the barrel. And then I also got this new little battery charger in. Little Amazon special, and the battery on this thing's been kind of going in and out and uh, just dying easy and stuff. So it's got like a repair mode, and it's way better charger than the other one that I had that kind of stopped working because it's been one of those ones where like you seem to have it forever. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get Clyde backed out, get the Camaro dropped down, do an oil change real quick, and then I gotta figure out how to get that dang barrel out of the back of my truck. What an absolute runner. Let it warm up a sec. This car's just been so good. It just like a daily driver. You go out and fire it up. It's only giving me a few little fits if it sits for quite a while and then it just you have to like prime the system. I think that has to do with the DI. Otherwise Clyde pretty much is uh super super reliable. Only issue we've had was that little uh transmission seal I guess. I'm gonna get this thing backed out. Salty drop down. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that little battery charger is straight ripping in repair mode. Alright, guys, so pro tip if you're trying to get a big barrel out of the back of something, Pull as much weight out as you can so i'm just going to empty as much as i can into the cans that i have laying around also this renegade pro 85 never ran it before gonna try it because it's available locally but uh it's orange usually use clear so kind of nice to know that like anything orange is gonna be e almost overflow it got it if you guys never have seen one of these little deals uh you just have this little release tighten that down seals it up Pump it a few times, creates a suction, and helps pump fuel out. So if, as long as you have one of these, if you have a 55-gallon drum in your garage, it's pretty easy to transfer it to a uh, can and then into your car, or even this straight into the car if you're close enough with this little deal here. So, uh, yep, that's kind of how I get my fuel from a place to here, because ever since I've been running E, and I recommend anybody that runs E to buy it by the barrel, because as you guys can see the other night, uh, it's starting to get a little cold out here, but uh, the injectors are actually pretty clean. They weren't too bad, and that's not treating it very well, letting the car sit a lot and all that stuff. So uh, the better fuel you get, plus I run some VP, like ethanol shield. It's like a little green bottle you can buy. That seems to have helped too over time as well. So I'm going to get this off so I can get, I'm going to at least get these filled up so I can get inside and do the oil change. For anybody that has used 2050, it's like syrup coming out of the car. So I'm going to let that stuff drain out. Get some fresh in. So anybody uh, that might wonder, this is what I run in the car. VR1, Valvoline 2050, high zinc for the, you know, the valve train stuff. Uh, kind of old school, I guess. There's like the high zinc, break-in, fluid, whatever. So uh, I used to run Brad Penn. It's not around or as much or definitely not as available. This you can just kind of get anywhere. So 2050 is what we run in the Camaro uh i mean i'll run in the burnout truck pretty much any race car performance stuff we run uh i'll run 2050 vr1 in it it's it's been pretty decent so uh i'm gonna go ahead and let that drain out get some fresh fluid in this thing and it's getting a little cool so i don't know if it's gonna fire up tonight or not battery is still in reconditioning mode and it's it's been a little bit i ended up getting the barrel out my thing fell down but barrel fuels out of the back of the truck now got a bunch there uh Still repairing, still humming along. So, curious, see how well that's going to work. So, final quart of oil. It's so thick. <laughs> this stuff is terrible. But it works good. So, uh, I'm going to get this put in here and hopefully we can fire this thing up. Check for leaks on the fuel system, make sure everything's good from doing the injectors. And then, uh, Yep, so on this car I run the Moroso 
like seven quart pan pretty much put seven quarts in it it's pretty much right there where you want it maybe a hair more than seven because of what's in the filter uh but it's always this pan that's on this card has been great i ran into a lot of um with the stock f body pan even with like that improved racing baffle i ran into a lot of scavenging of the factory oil pump and now with this one it's it's been great so uh 90 psi oil pressure all the way down the track has been exactly what i was looking for instead of you know 70 20 60 30 50 40 back and forth as it scavenges for fuel or for oil i mean so i think we're good going to let that all kind of seep down into the motor try to fire this thing up the uh battery charger is still Still working on it, so I really don't want to stop it in the middle of it, but it kind of is what it is. I need to get this thing fired up. All right. All right, everyone, so a Salty is back running just the way it should. New oil, clean injectors, more fuel, new fuel. Uh, everything so we should be good to go I think this might be the last or I might do a shock setup one if I go over the settings on the double adjustables before I take it out because I kind of want to do that so I might do a quick video about that and then the one after that you guys will see will be us running this thing uh, and hopefully going it's quickest time ever definitely probably the quickest time ever in the quarter mile since I haven't really ran it out the back yet uh, so yeah I'm going to so I think we'll call it there. Appreciate everybody for watching. That's pretty much my prep uh, two evenings here in the shop. That's what I do to get the car ready. Super simple, basic maintenance, and should keep everything happy. So if you guys want to see some more Turbo Camaro content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video.